Thank you so much. Um, that was a, quite an intro. First of all, um, let me just say that I um, hope that uh, Brother Grand and Brother Vice Grand, when they invited me to be the keynote uh, speaker, one of them anyway, that they told me the truth, that uh, the undergrads really wanted to hear from me. You know, I know Michael Jordan is hanging out there and Shaquille O'Neal, but they said you really wanted me. Now, unless they lied, then here I am. So <laughs> I'm here thinking that uh, it, it was a request. Uh, to all of the speakers before me, man, let me tell you something. I sat here and I'm so impressed at the level of eloquence that these brothers speak. Because, you know, they have a way about them that I don't have. That's, that's not my way. Uh, but I understand that. My gift lies somewhere else. I'm always impressed by brothers who get educations because I don't have that either. So the brothers that spoke before me, the doctors, the titles, Brother Briggs, all of them, I was just sitting here, man, just feeling really, really humble because I was talking to Deion Sanders one time, prime time, and we were standing in front of his gate. And there was a man across the street who had a house that was 32,000 square feet. And I'm standing in front of prime time's house. And we have been watching this man's house because I stayed across the street from prime. And we was watching this man's house and we kept, prime kept saying to me, hey man, who live over there? And we talk all the time. And one day, we just happened to be standing there and the guy came out the driveway, came out in the drop top, two seater bins, came out the gate, prime time had prime time on his gate, which I thought was a lot. But we standing there and Dion said something to me. He said, man, I know what I do and I know what you do. I'm in sports, you in entertainment. What do he do? cause his house bigger than all our house. The man came out the driveway and saw us and said, oh my God, this is the greatest day of my life. Prime time and Steve Harvey together. He jumped out, he wanted pictures, autographs. We're standing there, we asked the guy what he did. He said, I'm a finance major and I run Frito-Lay. You run what dog? Frito-Lay. He runs the entire Frito-Lay division out of Dallas, Texas. And me, and as we took the pictures, he drove up Prime and said, man, because Prime don't have an education either. He said, man, people who get educations are special. And I've always been impressed by education. And I'm saying that to the brothers that spoke in front of me and to the brothers that I'm talking to on this Zoom, what you've accomplished is major. You make no mistake about that. Some of you are the first time uh, anyone's graduated in your family. Some of you are following a tradition that your parents laid down and have went back to the colleges they went to, whatever the case may be. When you accomplish this thing that you've done, it's major, man. And people like myself, when I talk to other entertainers that don't have what you have, we are all humbled and floored at your ability to start a task and see it through. And let alone get just a, 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 a bachelor's. It's brothers in here with, with hats on, with, with bars, and, and they got robes. He had cords on his robe. What do you have to do to get cords on your robe? And three bars, how you get the hat? You get to keep the hat with the thing dangling on it. What did you do? To get that, that is beyond major, man. And I want you to know that my respect for you is there. And congratulations for accomplishing something that very few people accomplish in this world. And see, uh, I, I wanted to say that because a lot of people think, as you could probably tell, like I'm not gonna read anything because I'm not good at that. I, I never learned how to read and look up like I was talking to you. I never mastered that skill, even on TV, they a little up set with me because I don't read teleprompters real good, but I read excellent. I just don't like, because I like looking at the audience, right? I was, I'm sitting here and, and I'm gonna speak to you from my heart because I only know one way. And when the brother said that you got to talk about uplift, 
I'm in the uplift business. And um, what I've learned is through my struggles in life, because of my not having what you have, not having what a lot of my brothers have, not having a formal education, uh, not to say that it's easy either way, but it undoubtedly made me come up the rough side of the road. Where I am on this mountain right here, I came up the, the other way. And it was, it was very, very difficult. Now, all of these men will tell you, even with a degree, <laughs> it ain't finna be nice. It's going to be rough. Brother Briggs spoke about it. It's gonna be tough, man. All these brothers talking about it. It's finna be funky. Do you understand me? Now, I'm gonna try to stay unemotional while I'm talking to you because if I get too emotional, my vocabulary, it shifts. It has a, it's got a, a voc, I have, a, you know, Anyway, let, let me just try to stay, because these brothers were so elegant, I want to stay in the vein. But this thing that you've accomplished, this degree now gives you a ticket to the dance. This degree is a ticket to the dance. Now, because of the color of our skin, we still gonna, it ain't just free entry, but you do have at least a ticket to get into to the dance. The question that I'm gonna pose to you about Uplift today is, when you get in the dance, how you gonna dance? What your dance gonna be about? And I'm here today to talk to you in a form of Uplift, but I gotta tell you this because I don't want you to miss this part of it. Because even though you've made this a major accomplishment, the real war, the real battle has just begun. And all my brothers that spoke before me will tell you that. College is probably the greatest time of your life. You won't have that again. Now you can have a greater life, but the carefreeness of college, those days are done. That maybe I'll go to class, maybe I won't. You, you, you can't maybe don't go to work. It's immediate consequence when you don't come to work. So how will you dance now that you have this degree? See, it's so major what you've accomplished that I have to share with you now something a bit different. Because even though you've got this degree and it's going to serve you well, most of you, and it has been drummed to your head to get an education and how important it is. And it is absolutely critical in your endeavors that you choose to move on in life. But I got to tell you a piece of truth right now that your education is not the most important thing. You got it now. They're gonna give you sheepskin, you're gonna hang it on the wall. You got the education, they can't take it from you. Now that you have the education, you must click a switch to do something with the education. So Steve, if education is not the most important thing, what is? I'll tell you what it is. Nothing is bigger than your dreams and visions, nothing, nothing. I don't care what nobody tell you. As a matter of fact, if you have an education, it is your dream and vision that spurred you to even get an education. Your dream of walking across that stage one day helped you hang in there to even get the education. What you wanna be with the degree helped you remain in school. That dream and that vision is critical. The Bible says a man without a dream or vision shall perish. Now, I'm not a, a biblical scholar. I don't know a lot of verses. I only know six, but I know six good ones. And the six got me here today. But the man without a dream or vision shall perish is beyond truth. It is beyond truth, brothers. You have got to now tap in to that dream and vision because now that you've graduated as great Omega men, I want all of you to be successful, but I'm gonna ask you something. Out of the 120 so that's supposed to be on the call, or how many of it they told me, 200, I probably got that number wrong. I need all of you to become successful. I need 10 of you to go and be great. I need 10 of y'all to go be great. See, you can be successful and that's a wonderful thing. But if I could get 10 of you to dig into your dreams, 
to pry open your imagination, to take that and turn around and serve other people. See, your life has got to be about service, man. You can't be a great leader without first being a great servant. You cannot become a great leader without having not been a great follower at one point in time, because you don't know how it go. We have a prime example of that sitting up in the White House right now. The reason he can't lead is because he's never been a servant of people. See, you understand the difference between him and Barack Obama, the major difference was not only education, but it was because Barack Obama was a servant of people. He served people. So he had a compassion and an understanding of what it was like to be down in Chicago, to get on the front lines. The leadership we have now has no understanding of that. And that's what all the brothers are speaking before me is trying to get you to understand that you got to dig deep. You got to be more than just this piece of paper that's hanging on the wall behind you. Cause that ain't finna be nothing in a minute, man. It really ain't. Unless you do something with it, it will be nothing in a minute. So now you got to take those dreams you have, those things that's locked away in your imagination. Now I'm finna tell you something that's a little bit different. I want everybody to forgive me for what I'm about to say. I'm gonna tell you this here now, look here. Albert Einstein once said that imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. I want you to understand something about your imagination. That imagination that you have, that crazy thing that you can't tell to everybody, that thing that wakes you up in the middle of the night, that thing that keep laying on your shoulder when you're trying to get some sleep, that thing that won't let you quit thinking about it, no matter what you go do. If you go do the field that you got your diploma in, there's still something back there that just worries you all the time. That's that imagination. You ain't gonna get away from that. Cause in that imagination is your greatness. Stay with your degree and you'll be successful. And congratulations. We need that because if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have a continuation because a lot of people can get education and we need educated people, it's critical. But I need 10 of y'all to be great. Only people who tap into their greatness, tap into their imagination. If Albert Einstein said that imagination is everything, it's a preview to life's coming attractions, then what that actually means is, all that stuff that's been placed in your imagination, where you think it come from? I'll tell you where it come from. It come from God. It come from God Almighty because he puts it in your imagination showing you a preview of a coming attraction he has for you. That's what your imagination is. The only reason I'm here today is because I leaned on that imagination when everything was going wrong for me. I imagine being a TV star in Cleveland, Ohio in 1968 when the teacher asked me and I was 11 years old. I wrote on a piece of paper, I wanna be on TV with a severe stuttering problem. I put that on my paper. That lady cut me up in front of that class. She'd write something like this on the paper. You can't even talk. She didn't know. My imagination was gonna take me to a place that she couldn't see. But you know why she couldn't see it, brothers? Because God didn't give it to her. He gave it to me. God gives you your imagination and only you can see it. Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attraction. If I had never played on my imagination, relied on it, had faith in it, I wouldn't even be here today talking to you. Because why they got me talking to you? I ain't got no education. All these brothers in front of me are far more qualified than I am, speech-wise, vocabulary, education. But you know why they got me here? Because I did one thing, man. I took that imagination that God showed me and I believed in it. And I took it to shape and turn myself into something. Now, only by God's grace, though, I'm gonna just be real with you now. Steve Harvey ain't really all of that. It is God's grace that was with me. And even though I worked harder than them, all, than them all, it was still not I, but God's grace and mercy, unmerited favor who got me to. So the brother that was on before me talking about, he said, you got to be in touch with the ultimate grand bosses. Your relationship with God, critical. Cause without him partner, you ain't finna make it. I tell you what you do, try to make it without him like I did. I did it for about 15 years and I knew better. 
I tried to make it without God. Until I turn it over to God, none of this happened. Your imagination is the future that God has for you. Don't ignore it. Don't play it off. Don't not use it. Explore it, get into it, man. It'll change your life. And when it changes your life, it would allow you then to change other lives. See, my father told me something real simple. My father had a third grade education, you know. My daddy told me one time, he said, Steve, look here, boy. He said, the best thing you can do for poor people is not be one of them. And that just, what? But daddy, you poor. He said, yeah. But the best thing you can do for poor people is not be one of them. He told me that when I was about eight years old. Do you know how that stuck with me, man? And I just wanted to have something so I could turn around and help somebody. See, the brothers that spoke before me, they have a lane that they're in, a very accomplished lane. And it's because of their ability, they can turn around and share with others how to get to where they are. And you got to listen to that. Because everybody got a lane they got to fit into. These brothers are telling you the absolute truth. I just, I just come at you a little bit different. So I'm gonna close because I don't know how to keep track of five minutes. I'm probably way over. And uh, I'm used to talking. I'm, I'm used to talking to audiences, you know, so like I can't see y'all. Like this is crazy to me. But so let me. Let me try to put a button on this for you. All of you should become successful. All of you should honor women, honor God. Remember the number one rule of manhood my father taught to me. I have a mentoring camp. Brother Ricky Lewis is a big part of that. Uh, Brother Blue Colquitt, uh, several of your frat brothers, they come down every year to help me out. And, and the number one rule of manhood was another very simple thing my father told me. When I asked my daddy, I said, Daddy, if I want to be a man, what's the best way to be a man? He said, you want to know the best way to be a man? So I said, yeah. He said, here, all you got to remember, do what you say you're going to do. I said, no, Daddy, I want to be a man. How do I be a man? He said, son, do what you say you're going to do. I started a mentoring camp. And that's the subject we cover in Manhood 101. If you do what you say you're going to do, everybody respects that. If you tell your child you're coming to the game to see him and you show up at the game, he's going to respect that. If you tell your woman you're picking her up at 7 and you show up at 7, she respect that. If your partner tell you he need to ride to work at 4 and you show up at 4 and you take him to work, he respect that. If your employer says, if you come every day, I'm going to cut this check for you, you show up every day and they cut the check, they're going to respect you. You're going to get a raise. If you do what you say you're going to do, that's as simple a thing as manhood as can possibly be described. And I'm a simple guy. So I just try to tell you to do that way. If you do that and you take everything you dream about, that thing that bothers you, you got your degree. I got that. But if there's something that bothers you, that keeps you up at night, that won't let you sleep, that got you getting up in the middle of the night, writing it down on a piece of paper, that's that imagination. That's your heavenly father tickling you saying, hey, I'm showing you a preview of a coming attraction I got for you. You need to go ahead and look into this. Now you got the power of choice. You can ignore that and just have a successful life. But I tell you what, if you tap into that, greatness is on the other side. Will Smith told me one time, he said, the best things in life is on the other side of fear. If you can just stop being scared. Well, let me, tell, let me rephrase that. You can't stop being scared but you just got to bust fear dead up in the face. You got to hit him in the mouth. You know, you, you just got to hit fear in the mouth, brothers. And you can get to where you're going in life, but greatness is waiting for you. And so I think that's enough time I've taken up. I hope that gives you uplift. I hope you turn around and teach others what you have learned. If some brothers hadn't grabbed me along the way and, and shook me and said, hey man, sit down, this is what you need to know. I wouldn't be here myself. Uh, so. I love y'all, I appreciate y'all. Uh, I'm from a group of men uh, called the Lampados Club. Uh, the Lampados Club was an organization that was, uh, it's no longer exists and uh, probably for good reason, but 
it was a wonderful group of men that I met in the Lampados Club. And that's all I should say, because Ricky Lewis is texting me right now. And he said, don't mention the Lampados Club. OK. OK, there was no such thing as the Lampados Club. It, huh? OK, I will. He said, pass it to Brother Tatum, because you said Lampados Club. There was no such thing as the Lampados Club. It was, it was, it was, it didn't really happen. It keeps me awake at night, even today, but it didn't really happen. Uh, thank y'all, brother, very much. And back to uh, Brother Tatum. 